Now, hi guys. It is a gorgeous morning here in the end times in paradise in Garfield, Texas on this breezy Saturday morning, March 10th, 2018, where we are heading to our first 90 degree day. 90 degree day in uh, Austin, Texas on March 10th, 2018. Wonder when our first triple digits will happen. But anyway, it, since it is Saturday, it is time for me to bring you my clueless moron roundup rant, where I simply uh, go on the pages of the mainstream media on an average Saturday in, uh, in 2018 to see how this planet's collective IQ is heading directly down the toilet. And of course, uh, one of the big stories on this planet today is this uh, supposedly this upcoming summit between the big maggot and the little maggot, Donald Trump and Kim Jong Un. They're going. Uh, they're going to sit down together. The two biggest hotheads on planet Earth are going to sit down together to hammer out a deal, a deal to uh, save the planet from nuclear war. And there's actually people uh, seriously acting like uh, this is th th this is going to do a goddamn thing except exacerbate the situation. I went, uh, the, the first time I, I heard this proposal, I thought of uh, Sancho Panza sitting down and negotiating with a squirrel. Uh, you can imagine who is Sancho Panza and who's the little rodent. Uh, you, you, you know, Sancho Panza and a squirrel negotiating their territory here in the backyard in, uh, in Garfield, Texas. But good old congratulations, uh, Associated Press, <clears throat> asking the question, what could go wrong? What could go wrong? Pitfalls pose risks in Trump Kim talks. Analyzing the, uh, they interviewed uh, like eight different global security experts about what could go wrong with Donald Trump and Kim Jong Un uh, hammering out a deal. We shall find out soon enough. But as long as we're in the what could go wrong department, <clears throat> let's see. Let's go over to the National Interest website. Get ready, Russia. American and British nuclear submarines are training in the Arctic. Yes, the five-week exercise is designed to assess the U.S. Navy's operational readiness for warfare in the Arctic. There you go. Uh, the exercise helps to increase the services experience in the frigid region and helps to advance our Navy's understanding of the Arctic environment, which is becoming increasingly important as tensions with Russia continue to rise. There you go. What could go wrong? with American and British nuclear submarines training in the Arctic today. Okay, it's good to see chemtrails showing up intelligently in the, uh, in the mainstream media news. I will get back to this story on, uh, on Wednesday. I uh, don't even know who this is from, uh, but I like it. <clears throat> How Engineering the Earth's climate could seriously imperil life. There you go. Travel with me to the year 2100. Despite our best efforts, climate change continues. So this is in 2100. Despite our best efforts, climate change continues to threaten humanity. 
desperate to stop the warming. Scientists deploy planes to spray sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere where it converts into a sulfate aerosol which reflects sunlight. Thus the planet cools because, yes, chem trails. There you go. It is a real strategy that scientists are exploring to head off climate disaster. The upside is obvious, but so too are the potential perils, not just for humanity, but for the entire natural world. Yes. So anyway, we are going to revisit this no shit Sherlock story on Wednesday, get a little deeper into that. But as long as we're talking uh, about geoengineering, let's go, you know, chemtrails, let's go over to geoengineering light, which is this unadulterated horseshit carbon capture and storage. That Time Magazine explained this to you. Oil companies agree on a climate change solution that would help their bottom line. Yes, climate scientists, politicians, and activists dedicated to fighting climate change have a range of opinions about the best way to stop global warming. The oil and gas industry has settled on one. That just so happens to help their bottom line. Yes, uh, and this of course would be capturing carbon dioxide created by burning fossil fuels. Uh -huh. The process known as capture, is carbon capture and sequestration or CCS would allow the oil and gas industry to continue to thrive while keeping greenhouse gases out of the atmosphere. At least in theory, again, this is another one of those, what could go wrong? Uh, it, you know, that this whole bullshit CCNS thing, and it, it, as well as any other geoengineering thing, it is just one more way uh, just to kick the can down the road and let us go right on uh, about our, our goddamn business. That we, that there is no need for any one of us to make any sacrifices in our consumer and lifestyle choices because the techno-utopians working for the oil companies are going to save the planet from the oil companies. Okay, what? Our, our, our friends at the Department of the Interior uh, up to this week. Interior officials are citing coal executives and crank bloggers to defend climate stances. Top officials at the Department of the Interior cited former coal executives and crank bloggers to challenge the overwhelming evidence of the threat posed by man-made climate change, according to department emails released through a Freedom of Information Act request. Uh, here's one. Uh, well, anyway, guys, again, I'm, I'm going to get back to this story on Wednesday. I got a lot to talk about here on the clueless moron roundup rant. So from trolls guiding climate policy, let's go over there to see what's going on on our friends at the Environmental Protection Agency. EPA hires GOP media firm to, to produce report praising Scott Pruitt. The EPA uh, has used $6,500 of taxpayers' money to hire a private media firm with strong Republican ties to help produce a report promoting Administrator Scott Pruitt's first-year accomplishments. 
they actually uh, managed to uh, make a 37-page report uh, detailing Scott Pruitt's accomplishments. And in the 37 pages, uh, Pruitt's name mentioned 214 times and of the 24 photos in the 37 pages, 20 of them are of Scott Pruitt. All right, what is going on with our friends at Chanel Perfume Company? I guess it's Chanel Perfume. Isn't that what Chanel is? Chanel sparks outrage by felling 100-year-old trees at Paris Fashion Week. Yeah, um, Chanel's 2018 catwalk event on Tuesday, uh, which transformed some patch of woods into a palatial fake forest, is now being criticized by these tree huggers. Well, my computer just ate this. But anyway, I think it was uh, nine uh, of these trees that, you know, to make way for the runway uh, so these clueless little bimbos didn't have to walk around the trees. They just literally just, just mowed down nine uh, of these uh, big, beautiful trees for their palatial forest. Okay, from France to California. Cost for California bullet train soars to $77 billion. The projected cost of California's bullet train from San Francisco to LA has jumped 20% now to $77 billion. And the opening date has been pushed back four more years to 2033. And you can just uh, do your own math there. Uh, okay, but uh, of course we have the new, the world's newest uh, number one richest man on the planet. He could just pay for the fucking bullet train himself and still have 23 billion dollars left all over in his pocket. And that, of course, is Jeff Bezos knocks Bill Gates off the top of Forbes' richest people list. Forbes magazine has released its annual list of super duper rich people and move over Bill Gates because Jeff Bezos is flush with cash. Surprising no one, the Amazon CEO topped the list with a $112 billion net worth. This is a milestone making Bezos the first person to top $100 billion on the list of world's billionaires. Falling from the top spot, Microsoft co-founder uh, Bill Gates clocked in at number two with a net worth of $90 billion. Uh, and of course, Mark Zuckerberg is in there, uh, $71 billion. President Donald Trump, however, was not so lucky. The real estate mogul dropped $400 million on the list uh, thanks to retail real estate in New York and, well, his personality. Quoting Forbes, quote, the president's polarizing personality is costing him business as well. Anyone who doesn't understand the dots between that story and these upcoming talks with uh, the little maggot, don't know what else to tell you. So what was McDonald's up to yesterday? Some of the McDonald's, unfortunately not the one that I drove past in South Austin, Texas, for how was McDonald's celebrating International Women's Day? McDonald's International Women's Day tribute is not impressing everyone. And so, of course, what they did on a lot of these McDonald's, 
is they they flipped the M for McDonald's, flipped it upside down, supposedly to make a it's supposed to look like a W for uh, for uh, for the word women, but of course all it looks like is a giant pair of tits. It looks like a, <laughs> it looks like a you know a goddamn ad for a strip joint. Uh, you know Hooters would be proud of the McDonald's uh, celebrating International Women's Day, and besides that, you know putting up a giant golden pair of tits all over their restaurants. Uh, of course, people were pointing out about uh, how McDonald's celebrates the, the lives of millions and millions of women every day by paying them slave wages in their goddamn part-time jobs. Uh, yeah, McDonald's celebrating International Women's Day. Mm-hmm. All right. But from McDonald's to Walt Disney. Disney's Star Wars land takes shape, and it is huge. The Star Wars themed area at the Disneyland Resort in Anaheim, California is rapidly taking shape. At Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, guests will be transported to the planet of Batu, a remote outpost on the galaxy's edge. There you go. Uh, it she does it. It's a safe bet that there will also be a few merchandising opportunities tied in. Uh, a second and largely identical version under construction at Walt Disney World in Florida. It does not put the price tag of this thing or of a ticket. Okay, from Disneyland to whoever the hell Loblaw is. Loblaws introduces cricket powder to President's Choice lineup. Instant protein powder is going mainstream. Oh, it's Canada's largest grocery chain has just introduced cricket powder to its lineup of store brand President's Choice goods. Farmed in Canada and made of 100% cricket powder, the new staple on store shelves is being touted as a sustainable food source and a high source of protein, B12, calcium, and fiber. There you go. It's being billed as a versatile ingredient that brings a subtle, earthy flavor to your food. A subtle, earthly, earthy flavor. I bet it does. Okay, but we have got to uh, go over there to the Geneva Motor Show where I could uh, do an entire rant. I just somehow managed to get it down to two stories from the Geneva Motor Show. Here is Star Supercars unveiled at the 2018 edition. So whoever these clueless morons picking out their, uh, their top five, the Bugatti Chiron Sport, 1,500 horsepower, the Corbellati Missile, 1,800 horsepower, the Ferrari 488 Pista, a lowly 720 horses, the Lamborghini Huracan Performance Spider, a, a miserable uh, 640 horsepower, but the winner the Rimac concept. There you go. Uh, with a 1,914 horsepower, it has a top speed of 412 kilometers 
per hour. Uh, I don't know what that is. 150 miles, maybe. 100 RIMAC Concept 2 cars will be produced, costing 1 million euros each. But one thing that was not much on display, god damn it, this year was booth babes on verge of extinction at Jiva Motor Show. Long synonymous with scantily clad women draped over pricey vehicles, this year's Geneva Motor Show is almost devoid of booth babes as automakers strive to polish their image following the Me Too movement. Yes, uh, car makers have for several years now been scaling back the use of skin flashing female models to draw in an overwhelmingly male audience at events like this one in Geneva. Yes. Um. All right, moving on from the Geneva car show, what is the news uh, in the cruise ship industry? Dramatic video captures rescue of woman who went overboard while taking cruise ship selfie. A passenger has been rescued after falling 15 stories off a cruise ship balcony and into the pitch black sea near the, near the Bahamas Tuesday night. Witnesses say she was taking a selfie aboard the Norwegian Epic on rough water when she suddenly plunged over the railing. Fellow passengers could hear the 53-year-old woman screaming as she fell into the water below. But, unbelievably, she was found. I just didn't think it was possible to find that person, passenger Karen Kennedy told Inside Edition. Yes, it was a simultaneous cheer all around. All right. Things did not go so well at a party in Houston, Texas last weekend as man shot and killed at party in Texas after putting on a bulletproof vest. The Houston Police Department says one man was shot and killed by another party goer after he decided to put on a bullet proof vest. According to investigators, about six to eight people were at the residence for a, for a party when the shooting occurred. Authorities say one man decided to put on a bulletproof vest while one of his friends fired a shot at him. Quoting uh, Houston Homicide Sergeant Mark Holbrook, quote, it is unusual that people would put on bulletproof vests and play with guns at a party, but these things happen sometimes. They do happen sometimes, especially in the great state of Texas. Okay, let's go from Texas to New Jersey. Man dies after driving around barricade and onto live wires in New Jersey. So is this a uh, is this a, an instance of climate change, the latest death from climate change or not? You know, this is that big nor'easter blowing up the coast last week, knocking down all of these power lines, and so with all of these millions of, of live wires all these barricades. Just drive around the goddamn barricades, you clueless fucking moron. Okay, but we're gonna go over from New Jersey to Vienna. Man went on stabbing attack in Vienna because he was in a bad mood, police say. An Afghan man 
admitted to stabbing and severely injuring a family of three and his 20-year-old compatriot in Vienna because, quote, he was in a bad, aggressive mood and upset about his life's situation, Austrian police said Thursday. Uh, so uh, I guess all of his all of his victims are recovering in the hospital. But let's come back over to our own country. Where was this? I think it was in, in North Carolina. Officer who resigned after being accused of beating a black man for jaywalking is arrested in connection with the incident. Uh, let's see, what happened here? Uh, Former, former officer Chris Hickman, Hickman, don't you love that name, Hickman, this honky, was arrested Thursday on charges of facing charges of felony assault by strangulation and misdemeanor assault inflicting serious injury. <clears throat> uh, Hickman is accused of beating choking and tasering this black dude who was uh, guilty. His crimes were he, he crossed the parking lot. First, they saw him cross a parking lot that of a business that was closed for the night. This black guy, I think it was like my, my computer just ate the story. I think it was like one o'clock in the morning. So this black dude dares in, uh, in North Carolina in the middle of the night with two uh, white cops watching. He crosses a parking lot of a closed business and then continues to jaywalk at which point the, uh, the honky uh, jumps out of his cop car and begins clubbing the guy, strangling him, tasering him. Anyway, Moving on to a little more romantic story. This one in Ohio. Engaged Ohio teacher, female, engaged female Ohio teacher had sex with 13-year-old female student from her school. An Ohio teacher was sentenced on Wednesday to three years in prison for sexual battery after she pleaded guilty to having sex with a 13-year-old female student. Brooke Rosendale was a fifth grade girls volleyball and basketball coach. Yes. Uh, there you go. Rosendale, 27, was engaged to her long-term boyfriend when the incidents occurred. And I'm gonna shut up right now before I get myself in any trouble. Here is how using dog speak can help you bond with man's best friend. Okay, what they suggest is previous research has already suggested that when adults talk to dogs in a high-pitched, exaggerated voice in the same way human adults talk to babies, uh, blah, blah, blah. Research has shown that this type of talk made little difference with adult dogs. Anyway, this gets way, so we're going to test this out. Okay, so when adults talk to puppies, I think Sancho Pons is about four years old. Oh, yeah, 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 Yes, I can see uh, Sancho Panza is, is very impressed by that. He says, I don't want a belly rub pop. Uh, anyway, uh, I'll have to get back to the story to how to uh, talk to adult dogs. But anyway, we're going to wrap up. I, I just did not have the stomach for the Kim Kardashian wrap up. 
uh, today. I'm sorry, there isn't going to be no Kim Kardashian news, but we're going to wind up in the New York Post. Childish men are to blame for women for women having kids late in life. There you go. I hear the same story told in different ways all over New York City. There you go. Uh, and we do have some good news. The latest U.S. Census fertility report published last week found that for the first time in reported history, over one half of women aged 25 to 29 are childless and a record 30.8% of American women aged 30 to 34 have not given birth. There you go. Uh, we do have some good news on the planet. Anyway, <clears throat> but it is those childish men, the childish men we can thank for the uh, lowering birth rate uh, in the good old United States of America. And I'm going to wrap it up here, and the little dog is going to go have a, uh, is going to go have a, are you going to go have a security summit with a squirrel? I think there's a squirrely out there. There's probably a squirrely out there wanting to have a security summit with you. You go have a security summit with a squirrely like that! All right. I'm sitting in the shade and already uh, I'm getting hot out here on March 10th. And my camera's in the sun, probably burning. Uh, I don't know how this is going to go for my brand new little, my little lettuce seedlings. I better come turn the water on and hope I don't leave it on for 7,000 gallons of water. Good Lord, 90 degrees on March 10th here in paradise. Smoke them if you got them, guys, and you know why. Bye, guys.